Hi, it's Ruby. Thanks for clicking on my video. Today I'm going to be breaking down for you my top tips for traveling and doing road trips with your family. And you know I like to do an emphasis on traveling with small children, so we'll definitely be talking about that as well. If you like my content, please consider subscribing and following me on Instagram and Twitter. Okay, so let's get right into it. Tip number one, you should really outline what your path is gonna be to getting to your destination. And focus on time, because time will dictate some of the recommendations that I make, and they might be a different priority to you based on how long you're gonna be driving. So for example, a five hour trip, there might be a lot more lax there than maybe a 12 to 20 hour trip. So keep that in mind when you're trying to map out how far you're going and what you're gonna be doing on the trip. Tip two, make sure you're checking traffic for the time you're planning on traveling and then also any road work that might be going on. With the additional, I'll say things going on in the world right now, there might be some closed roads. Definitely wanna look at local traffic information and check out the traffic sites or places that might tell you what construction work is gonna be happening on freeways. Third tip, make sure you're adding on one to two hours to whatever your estimated time is. I say that to account for a lot of uncertainty but one of the big ones that you want to make sure you put time in for is food and bathroom breaks Okay, those are very important and especially if you're driving for more than five hours You want to make sure that you're putting that into it so you don't get too tired or worn out next tip Make sure that you're trying to plan out where you're going to stop. And I think this is really important if you're gonna be going through rural areas or areas that don't have gas stations readily available. I know when I was road tripping over to college, it was about like a five hour drive from my home. I needed to stop in one city, and if I didn't make it there, I was gonna run out of gas because there wasn't a lot of places to stop for gas. So make sure you're counting for that. Also, if there's like a favorite restaurant or a place that you wanna eat, make sure you're planning on hitting that off of like the free where you're gonna be looking for. For example, when I'm driving down to Southern California from Northern California, I'm gonna wanna hit the in and out that is off of the five because I know that I'm not gonna be able to have a lot of opportunities to get it elsewhere. So make sure you're planning for that. Also, with the pandemic that we're in currently, if you're watching this video later and it's not an issue, disregard, but some of the bathrooms along the way, like rest stops, are closed based off of resources to clean those locations. So you wanna make sure that you have a place to eat, to get gas, and to use the restroom if you need to. Also, if there's a, there's a milestone or a landmark that you wanna see, like maybe you, you wanna go through Yellowstone, check and see what's open and what the time and requirements are for booking so that you have access to that and you can plan for it in your overall trip time. It seems like an obvious tip, but also make sure that you're checking out your vehicle and making sure that it's good to go for whatever type of trip you're taking. If you're going up a mountain, make sure that you have really good tire pressure and that you have good traction between your tire and the road. Do you need to get chains for your tires, is there gonna be snow? Also, it's kind of random, but make sure you're checking your windshield wipers. If you're gonna be in a lot of rain, it's important to have windshield wipers that work so you have good visibility. Another obvious one is like oil or maybe windshield cleaner. If you're gonna be driving for a while and you get all those bugs on there, you wanna make sure your car is up to par or whatever vehicle you're gonna be using. Another tip is to have food and water in your car. You never know if emergency is gonna happen, God forbid it does, but if it does, you wanna make sure you have enough water and enough food to sustain you in the event that help needs to come to you. Also, if traveling at night versus day, I'm gonna talk about the benefits of both later, but you might not have access to food. Some places might be closed. So you wanna make sure you have snacks so you can get your pick me up as you're driving. When you pick the time that you're gonna be leaving, take into account arrival time. Why does that matter? Well, some resorts will not let you check in if you're staying at a resort at your destination until like four or three o'clock. So if you're arriving super early in the morning, it might be fine to have your bag held and use the amenities, but if you're tired, you're not gonna be able to sleep properly or at least in a bed. That happened to me when I flew into Miami and it was horrible, like trying to stay up until I had to get checked into my room so I could nap. So keep in mind that and any other things that might affect what time you leave and what time you need to arrive at a destination. My next tip is to make sure you have proper entertainment. There's definitely times when you're driving on a freeway or a highway or maybe up a mountain and you know what, your music doesn't work anymore because there's no longer connectivity or Wi-Fi or whatever else and now you're sitting here just listening to the sound of your breath or the person next to you snoring. Not fun. And for kids especially, they need a variety of activities. So maybe they're looking at a coloring book or they're listening to music 
or you've downloaded a movie onto their iPad. Make sure you have that stuff downloaded for places that might have weird spots where you lose the ability to utilize your phone service. And also just to make the trip a little bit more enjoyable, especially if you're going for longer than a few hours. You know your children and your company way better than anybody else does, so keep in account what they might need. I do want to also know, I'm the type of person that actually gets sick in the car if I read. So I don't put activities for my children that would require them to look down for a long time because that motion for some reason makes me not feel great. So think about that too and try to pick up signs in your children to see if they also have the same ailment. My last tip, which I could have totally put at the top of this video, but I'm putting it at the end, is to decide whether you're going to drive during day or during night. There's definitely benefits to both. But I would say that the benefits for driving during the day are, one, there's like things to see so you don't get bored as, as quickly. Two, daylight promotes being awake whereas at night you tend to get tired. So if you're somebody that falls asleep early, you definitely don't want to travel at night. If you're driving through a new area, like I mentioned, you have a lot more things that you can see and the person next to you or in the car might be awake. But a con to that is the person in the car might be awake. So for me, for a long trip, I'm gonna definitely try to drive during a time that's over nap time or overnight because I don't want my kids to be awake the whole time. That will be a lot for them. That is something you should think about. During the day, you have more more likely of a chance to stop and get gas and food because things are open. Whereas if you're traveling at night, that might be an issue. If you're going through Oregon, for example, they do have a law that requires the person working at the gas station to pump your gas. So at night, they might not have a night shift and gas stations might be closed down. Now you can't get gas. So you want to think about those types of things when you're traveling or picking day or night. Some of the pros to driving at night would be, in my experience, there's less traffic. You're less likely to hit those random traffic stops. Unless there's construction on the road, you're pretty much never going to have to stop. But the cons would be that you're driving at night and it could be dangerous. And if you're going to be going up like a mountain or something like that, where maybe you need to be aware of ice or things on the road, being dark might not be a benefit. But your kids might sleep and so it makes for a nicer process. I like to drive at night because I feel like I get there fast, if my kids will sleep and I can listen to my podcast or my music and it's kind of like a peaceful experience to me. Granted, if I'm driving through a new place, I want to be able to see so I want to maybe drive during the day, but that is harder on my children. So there's definitely pros and cons, but you want to make sure you're looking at the amount of time you're going to be driving and where you're going to be driving when you determine whether you're going to drive during the day or at night. And I really would not recommend driving at night if you're gonna be driving up the side of a mountain or if you're going to be doing like a short distance where it's not that big of a deal to have to stop extra. Like a three hour drive, you know, drive through the day, that's a little bit better. Whereas if you have like a 15 hour drive, driving through the night would take out a chunk of that time and allow for more sleeping. Since I did mention traveling for a long time, make sure you travel and take a stop or a break. Um, some people are like road warriors and they're just like, I'm gonna go through it and not stop, but listen to your body and kind of figure out if you're tired, if you're hungry, and take that break if you need to. You wanna set realistic expectations for yourself. Well guys, that's what I had for you today. Let me know what you think. Did I miss any big tips? And you know, if you're gonna be taking any fun road trips over the next couple months, just to kind of get out of the house and get a change of scene, drop a comment below and let me know what you're gonna have planned. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.